everyone and welcome to another Wargaming Terrain tutorial. This week we're actually going to look at painting. So I want to go through some tips and tricks I have for painting up this guard tower. Uh, now this is the one we made in the last video. Uh, there was quite a few good techniques that um, I showed you through this one to get this one built. Uh, I was really happy with this. Uh, the one thing I didn't do last week though was to show you how I painted this up. Uh, so in this video I'm going to show you not just how I painted it but also hopefully share some tips and tricks I have for uh, painting up my terrain. So let's get stuck into it. All right, now in this video, I'm just gonna share a few of my tips and tricks. These may not be the best or perfect ways to do things. I found a few shortcuts that I use, a few ways to save a little bit of money here and there, uh, and I'll hopefully share those with you. Uh, this will hopefully give you a bit of an idea as well on how to get a pretty good effect pretty cheaply. Uh, so the first, way we're, first thing we're gonna do here is uh, we're just gonna do our uh, Mod Podge and Black Paint over those sandbags to give them a uh, uh, little bit of extra strength and also a bit of a base coat. Now the reason I use the Mod Podge uh, is allegedly is a bit stronger than PVA but I also find it gives it a pretty nice matte black finish uh, rather than a glossy finish. I just mix mine up in a small jar as you can see here. This is really watery as well so uh, it doesn't take a lot of black paint to get it nice and, nice and black. Uh, but uh, I use a fair bit of water in that so it is quite watery. The reason I do that is so that it, it will actually sit down in all these cracks. It's perfect for these sandbags because uh, you'll find once you put them all together there's quite a few holes there and with this white air drying clay it's pretty. It's really easy to miss little bits and pieces here and there as you're painting this uh, if you're just using unthinned paint. So uh, like I said I try to water down this PVA and black paint a fair bit so that it will run into all the recesses of these sandbags and that'll make sure that when I'm finished um, giving this coat on there that uh, I don't have any little small specks of white or little white bits that I've missed with the paint. So if you water this down nicely you should find that it will fill in all the crevices and all the uh, little holes that you've got and you shouldn't have any of those uh, white bits standing out. And you can certainly substitute uh, the Mod Podge for PVA here. Uh, you should get pretty much the same effect. You will strengthen up your sandbags a little bit and you will get pretty decent coverage with it. Uh, just have the Mod Podge on hand and like I said, I find it gives me a, a fairly nice matte black base coat uh, to go over this uh, with my airbrush and brush later on. So just fill in all the gaps you can see. Uh, I'm not very clean with this. I'm uh, just sticking it in wherever I can see any gaps there. And then we'll be able to, once we set this to dry, we'll be able to move on. Uh, now the next step I use here to paint this guard tower is going to be with my airbrush. Uh, now there's a fair bit of advice on YouTube and on the internet already around um, using an airbrush. Uh, this is the compressor I have. It's certainly not a cheap one. The first one I had I think cost me about 70 bucks. Uh, this one is quite a bit more than that. Um, but you will notice the difference with a decent compressor. It will give you not only uh, consistent pressure throughout the painting uh, rather than an up and down pressure. It also gives you the advantage of a moisture trap for your airline uh, which you can see there. It has adjustable pressure and one of the main things I find <laughs> I like about that compressor is it's nice and quiet so nothing's going to ruin your enjoyment of painting your terrain than a really loud compressor chugging away while you're doing this. Now the airbrush I use is another Awada product, it's the uh, Awada Eclipse I think, HPCS model. Uh, this is quite a good uh, airbrush, you certainly don't need to spend a lot of money though on an airbrush, you don't need a branded one. Generally the things to look out for if you're just beginning your terrain and you want to just see if this is right for you, uh, just try and find yourself a cheap dual action airbrush. Uh, dual action will allow you to control the amount of uh, paint that you're spraying when you pull down the trigger. So the trigger all the way back and you'll get large amounts of paint coming through uh, but you are like I said able to control the amount of paint that's going through. So the main things that I try to keep in mind when I'm painting with my airbrush is how thin the paint is. Uh, I find the uh, Vallejo Game Air and even their primer colours go through my airbrush without the need for too much thinning or any thinning sometimes. So those products are really good to use. Um, I, I generally will use those more so than uh, trying to thin down craft paints. You can also use uh, some of the Citadel colours. Uh, again, you need to be uh, sort of play around with the how much you're thinning your paint down. So if you're having trouble getting the paint to go through your airbrush, it's usually got to do with either the amount of pressure that you've got uh, also, it'll be the uh, amount of thinning of the paint that you've done. 
Uh, the other thing is that you want to make sure that you keep your airbrush pretty clean. So as long as you're doing those things uh, and a bit of practice, it does take some time to get good and get, get to understand you know, the right amount to thin your paints and also the amount of uh, pressure that you need uh, depending on the type of paint and even the colour of the paint will sometimes um, require different amounts of thinning and also different amounts of air pressure but with a fairly decent compressor you should be able to control that pretty well. Uh, now as I'm putting the paint on with the airbrush generally you don't you, your first pass with the airbrush is generally a pretty light coat so you don't want to get full coverage you'll see here I move around this model I uh, go from the top to the bottom and to different parts without fully getting the full coverage. For the most part your airbrush paint should be drying as it kind of hits the model uh, when you're airbrushing but uh, again you don't want to overdo it when you're spraying so it's best to do several light passes of paint rather than uh, trying to get the full coverage on the first pass with your airbrush. So that's why you'll see me moving backwards and forwards over the, over the model here, going up and down onto different parts and then going back to them. Uh, that just allows the first coat or the first um, pass with the paint to dry before you go back and add another layer. So again, this is just practice with your airbrush. You will get uh, pretty good with it pretty quick, or when I say pretty good, you, you will get great results really quickly. So I'm certainly not an airbrush expert and there is much better advice that you'll be able to find online uh, around if you want to get into more detail of you know, airbrushing and how to get really good and how to do more than just what you see me doing here. So. Um, I didn't initially buy this airbrush setup for terrain, um, so it is probably overkill as far as how much I've spent. Uh, I bought this about six years ago, so uh, it's probably overkill definitely for just painting up terrain. Uh, but you could, if you want to get into sort of painting miniatures or painting more paintings, uh, you'll find that uh, a, a good quality airbrush and a good quality compressor will definitely do everything you need it to do. Now you see with the black primer that I've put on, I haven't got full coverage on on the foam board there I've mainly focused on the cracks and the dints in the concrete structure um, that's just to make sure that uh, those stay uh, dark and quite shadowed and I find the foam board takes the paint pretty well even without a primer on it so I don't generally waste the paint to cover it fully I have given some pretty good coverage to all the uh, wooden sections and also to the sandbags and the corrugated roof at the top uh, I'm now using this uh, Vallejo Game Air. It doesn't require to be thinned um, for my painting here. This went straight into the airbrush and comes out, as you can see, nice and smooth. Uh, again, you'll get pretty s consistent gradients with your airbrush. Uh, once you've kind of got the distance away from the model that you need to be painting, uh, you'll find that this, um, this will go on pretty well. And again, you want to do light passes each time. Don't try to spray it too close or too heavy with the paint. Um, for each of your, uh, when you go into this with your grey colour, uh, we want to leave some of that darkness from the black on there. Uh, and you'll see here that what I'm doing is actually moving the airbrush around pretty, pretty quickly. This is just to give a bit more of an uneven grey um, coverage on there. So the concrete's not going to be uh, consistently grey. This is supposed to be an old, worn out, you know, building. So uh, I'm not at all trying to get this to be perfect coverage. I'm just moving the airbrush around quickly to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more uh, weathered look on it. Um, as you can see here, the way you hold your airbrush is also going to determine where the overspray goes. So um, keep that in mind when you're spraying. If you really don't want uh, overspray onto a certain section, then try to angle the piece or angle your airbrush away from uh, the part that you don't want covered. Now at this early stage of the painting I am not too worried about overspray on any of this because uh, I will still be going back in uh, to paint those sandbags and the, the uh, timber sections of this model. So um, here I've just sped, I've sped this up so uh, just keep in mind how fast I paint. Uh, this takes a little while to get through but again you can see I'm just getting uh, sort of patchy coverage on this leaving some parts darker some parts lighter. Uh, this will give us a really good effect at, towards the end uh, and gives us that uh, sort of realistic concrete look. So once we work our way through this part, um, you'll see that we've left some of the shadows in there um, by not covering it with the grey. Uh, we've also sort of focused the higher, the, the lighter parts of grey to where we think people are going to probably walk on this, um, on these concrete parts. So you don't need to um, cover the whole lot. You can leave some artificial shadows uh, with that black paint that we put on the first time around. Uh, and you'll see this comes up really nicely. So this part here is just about done, so let's move on to the next. 
So for the next part here, we're going to use some charred brown uh, as Vallejo Game Air Color again. So this won't require thinning in my airbrush. This should go through pretty nicely. Uh, what we're going to do here is give this a give our sandbags a bit of a base coat here. Uh, this is just going to uh, cover up that black. We're also going to throw some of this onto some of these timbers, uh, mainly just the posts. I'm not going to worry too much about the stairs at this point. Uh, we just really want to get this uh, base colour down for our uh, sandbags. Now again, remembering which way that overspray is going to go, uh, when I'm spraying up against the wall and the front of these sandbags, I'm trying to angle that away as you can see there so that I don't get too much of this brown going down onto the uh, concrete that we've already painted. Uh, so this is just a base colour, uh, I will be going over this with a little bit of dry brushing and some more colours for those sandbags to get them uh, to the exact look I'm looking for. And we'll also be painting the timbers here, um, brush painting those um, to the brown we're looking for. So we'll get to that in just a few minutes, uh, but this just gives me the bit of um, uh, base colour, like I said, for those sandbags. We're also going to start on some of the weathering on the concrete with this colour. So I'm going to stick with the charred brown for the time being and we're going to start working on some of the uh, some of the like runs uh, of where I think the water will have run down on the building. Uh, this would have obviously stained some of the concrete. Uh, so we're going to um, start putting some of that in there. Um, now for this part, you know, I want to start off really light. So again, because I have the dual action airbrush here, I'm able to control how much paint is coming out of the airbrush but when I pull the trigger. Um, so this allows me to start off with really light passes of this colour. So I don't want to get too um, stuck into um, getting this exactly the way I want it first time round. Uh, we're really going to add these in and then come back and look at um, darkening them up again with some other colours as well. So you'll notice here as I'm painting as well, um, I'll quite often I'll move the brush away from the piece and I'll give it a bit of a um, press down of the trigger. Uh, at that point I'm not spraying paint through, I'm actually just letting some air through. The reason I'll do that is um, the, the tip of the airbrush, the needle will actually Occasionally it'll get a little um, a little dollop of paint sort of build up on the end. So sometimes when you paint and then you stop and then you start again, it'll actually spatter that paint across your model. So it's a good idea to every now and then just to move your airbrush away from the model and give it a little squirt of air. And usually that will get rid of some of that, uh, will get rid of a bit of that paint that's uh, collected on the end of the needle. Uh, so that's just how you stop some of that spattering that happens when you're airbrushing. So here I'm really going, um, aiming towards the cracks and like I said, wherever I think this might, the water might be running, uh, running down or collecting. So obviously where the cracks are and where there's uh, holes in it, that will uh, obviously give us um, some runs of water or some collected water and that's gonna stain that concrete. So that's what I've tried to aim for there. So here I realized I forgot to paint the roof. So I'm going back in with the cold gray, same color I did the concrete with. Uh, we're gonna add a few extra bits here as well. So uh, I did use the Lejo's primer. This is a red brown, German red brown that I used uh, for some of that there and also the charred brown as well. And I used that little template. Uh, you would have seen me use that when I made the aircraft hanger or the vehicle hanger. Uh, back a couple of videos now but uh, it's just basically a little piece of paper with a small section small rectangle cut out that just gives me a little template to spray over to give me the effect of uh, sheets of corrugated iron on the top uh, it's probably not perfect but yeah it gives a little point of difference for that corrugated so the next thing we're going to do is go inside it and start painting now these four paints are pretty much crucial to my terrain painting they are cheap craft paints I've got a black, a white, a burnt umber, and a burnt sienna. Um, so these colours, they're the only four of these I have. They cost me about three bucks for a tube and they last a lifetime pretty much for what I do. So um, I find wherever I can, I'll use these for my terrain painting. I find there's no real benefit in using expensive model paints, things like um, the Vallejos or Citadel colours. Uh, they're quite expensive for very small amounts of paint. So for most of my terrain where I'm not using my airbrush, uh, and you, you certainly could put these through an airbrush, they just take a bit more time working out the thinning of this paint and it really, it doesn't cover quite so well through the airbrush, but you certainly could use them through the airbrush. I don't just for the simple fact that um, I find it so much quicker for me to get through my projects if I've got uh, if I've got the uh, Vallejo colours or, or already pre-thinned paints for my airbrush. But here I'm just using uh, the 
burnt umber colour here for the timbers on, on this um, structure. Uh, you'll see it's going on pretty thick and it looks quite maybe a little bit goofy at this colour but it will dry quite a bit darker than that so I've also thinned it down quite a lot so I've added quite a lot of water into the palette there with this um, colour. Uh, I don't mind going over this a couple of times with a couple of coats if I have to. Uh, as I said this is going to darken up a little bit as we get through the painting uh, but I use these craft paints quite a lot. I find with those four colours, the black, white, the burnt sienna and the burnt umber, you get quite a few gradients, quite a few different shades that you can use and look for a lot, any time I've got a brush paint, if it's within that colour range, they're the, they're the paints I'll use for this. So uh, here you'll see me just putting a light coat over my sandbags as well. Now for this I'm using, uh, I'm actually going to thin this down quite a bit. Um, I would say it's, this is going to be almost, it's all, like, let's say it, a wet dry brush, how's that sound? <laughs> um, so what we're actually doing here is um, trying to get this over all the exposed areas of the sandbags. So because we airbrushed through with the charred brown before, most of the black has been covered up even in the cracks and crevices. So I'm not trying to get this into all of those cracks and crevices now. I really just want this to cover the exposed areas of uh, these sandbags. Now I will go back in with some Citadel colours and do a bit of a uh, dry brush over these. So this is by no means the final colour that I'm aiming for for these sandbags but this will just give us another sort of, um, another shade of brown really that, that's gonna make these sandbags really pop out towards the end. So here I'm, uh, as I said, it's, it's quite thin and you can see how when it's drying, it's actually darkening up quite a bit. So the color you see going on uh, when it's wet is not always gonna be the color that you get at the end. So keep that in mind when you put this on. Uh, don't be afraid to try out some colors, do some testing and, and see how this stuff dries up. Cause when it first goes on, it might look a little bit funky, but uh, you'll see as it dries, it's actually quite good. So uh, what I'm also doing here is cause I've put that burnt umber color over all of the um, timber areas. Uh, that was just brush painted on. I'm now actually just putting uh, some of this uh, burnt sienna uh, around some of these edges. So um, this goes quite nicely as a bit of a highlight for the burnt umber, which I've used on the timbers, as I mentioned. Uh, and again, it looks a bit, looks a little bit full on when it first goes on, but you will notice, uh, as I said, that it will dry really nicely. It'll blend in quite well with that burnt umber color that we've used for the timbers. So I'm really happy I'm going to do this over a couple of times, just a couple of uh, passes with some highlighting of, with that burnt, uh, burnt sienna colour. And like I said, this will give us a really good, um, really good effect for that, those timbers, those timber stairs and the railings. Now the next thing you're going to see me do here is uh, some of the weathering on the concrete. So we're going to, um, what we're doing is just making up a really, th really, really thin brown wash. Uh, and we're going to go over here over all of these uh, runs where the water has run down on our concrete and we're going to just fill those in a little bit so it, I imagine that uh, you know that the water's running it's going to stain particularly in one area and sort of graduate out of there so that's why we've got the airbrush um, sort of gradients on there first off and this is how we actually go in and sort of define those a little bit more. Now again the, the wash I've got down there is different thicknesses kind of depending on where I put my brush. So that's why you'll see me sort of going into the water, adding a little bit more water here and there. You might notice some of these, um, as I'm putting some of these strokes on, I'm getting kind of different effects. So some are, some are a lot more brown than others. Some look quite watery. And when we come back around, you'll actually notice that some of them have almost disappeared. So while they're wet, they look really sort of harsh and, dis and defined. But again, once we've um, let them dry, we'll actually come back and quite a few of these we'll actually go over again and do two or three passes with the brush uh, with this brown wash just to get the right effect that we're looking for. But this really doesn't take any sort of skill to do this. This is just um, practice. It's just a, you know, a medium brush uh, with, like I said, quite a watered down burnt umber that I'm using to get these runs on here. And you'll see as we move around the model, as we come back to some of the drier parts, uh, that it's almost disappeared. Um, as you get in closer, it's probably, you probably can't see it quite so well um, on the video, but 
uh, in person when you get up kind of close to the model you can really sort of see where the the water runs a lot and the gradients that we got from the airbrush are actually just kind of more like stains that have sort of uh, grown out from where the water uh, tends to run down and again focus mainly on where I think the water would collect or, or sort of uh, run down the most so anywhere you've got a beam like there obviously the water's probably going to run down there a fair bit more um, some of the areas under the stairs uh, and I, as, because I do have that uh, one um, join section in the concrete that goes right away around the building I've sort of focused on that as well so I figure the water's going to kind of pull up along that crack and work its way across as it run uh, before it runs down the side of the building uh, so as you'll see here as I get this sort of finished up uh, it's thinning out and drying up and it's starting to become almost non-existent again so you can see here we did a first pass on this side of the building and already that's almost disappeared in in person like I said you will see this come through uh, quite a bit more defined uh, and it will give you a really nice effect uh, towards the end of the building so that's how I basically weather up these concrete structures I did the same on the vehicle hangar I'll put a link to that video um, the same thing was done on the sides of the, that building just to get that effect of the water collecting and running down. I really like this, I think it gives a, a really easy, simple kind of extra level of depth and weathering to the building. I don't spend a lot of time with a lot of different colours to get that. I just do qu uh, a couple of different passes with the brown here, the burnt umber um, craft paint and that gives me exactly the effect I'm looking for. So I'll do a couple more passes on this one and we'll come back towards the end and have a bit of a look at how this has turned out. So as you can see they're looking pretty pretty nice and fairly well defined on there now. I am pretty happy with this at this stage. You can add more, I suggest doing this really lightly, like I said, very watered down uh, wash for this one so that you'll, it's better to do four or five passes even. Uh, rather than trying to get that effect in the first pass with a with a heavy brown so better to use a really watered down color and go over a few times and hopefully towards the end you'll see uh, you'll get that effect you want without having overdone it at any point so uh, if you find that any of them are a little bit too uh, too defined or, or too sharp uh, any of those runs that you've done just go in with a little bit of water and run your brush around it and it will start to sort of wear it uh, sort of give it that extra bit of gradient I guess that's a bit of a wet blend kind of thing uh, but you will see if you just add a little bit of water and go back over with your brush you'll be able to sort of blend those um, those harsh lines out if you do end up if you did end up with any so you can see uh, that's the weathering that's as far as I'm going to go with weathering that concrete I think I'm pretty happy with that um, we just want to finish up these sandbags now so I'm going to use a little bit of Deathclaw Brown um, Citadel now for this I'm using, I'm actually using uh, my dry brush but uh, it's actually quite wet so I don't really want to dry brush this but at the same time I don't want thick paint going over the top of this so uh, again I'm just looking at all the exposed edges, I'm not trying to get this into cracks and crevices but I am trying to get this to fairly well cover everything that we've done so far. So. Uh, not quite a dry brush but at the same time this is not out of the pot or even on a palette so um, again just start with light amounts and hopefully you'll get the effect you're looking for uh, it's really hard to go backwards once you put on too much paint so uh, best to try and uh, you know get this on lightly first and add more if you need to uh, it's a bit hard to get rid of it so there you can see our first um, coat of uh, Deathclaw Brown has gone on to those sandbags. They're looking pretty good. Um, you can still see a few uh, brush strokes in amongst this, um, so I'm just going to go over it again just really quickly. Don't worry too much if you can see some of those brush strokes. We're going to give it a dry brush and it, honestly it'll add a little bit of, uh, of a textured look to these uh, sandbags as well. So the next colour I'm going to use here is uh, Kislev Sh Flesh. Kislev Flesh, is that right? Uh, anyway, this is a this is definitely a true dry brushing, so uh, this won't be covering up too much. This is just going to be going on all the sharper edges of these sandbags. This will really just bring them out and give them that highlight that we need. Uh, yeah. These colours are certainly not uh, strict by any means. I'm just picking up pots of colour and, and trying it out to make sure it works. Um, these colours that I used for this one turned out pretty good. I, honestly, when I painted the sandbags, I probably used different colours. 
Uh, that's fine by me, so long as you're using the same colors across whatever structure you're building. So uh, you don't want to probably do different uh, highlight colors on the same building, but it won't really matter if you use one color for one building and a slightly different color for a different building. And again, if you don't have these colors available to you, just play around. Honestly, I've um, a lot of projects that I've tried off other people's YouTube, uh, I rarely have this the right colors that uh, they're suggesting so I just have a bit of a play around find something that's close and really it won't be too hard for you to get the, the effect that you're looking for or a similar effect with some slightly different colors uh, really don't sweat it don't go spending a ton of money trying to get these um, things to look exactly the same because you really don't have to uh, you could probably you could probably find some nice craft paints in the right color to get these highlights done um, now because I've got a little bit of that Kislev flesh left on my uh, palette there I'm actually going to put a couple of little highlights around some of these timbers just to bring them up a little bit more and we are pretty much finished with this project I am really happy with how this turned out this was my second attempt at painting this one so this was my second build I've got two of these towers now uh, and the process was pretty much exactly the same. There wasn't a great lot of thought put into the colors that I've used. Uh, this, is, this is what works well and um, the two towers go really well together. Uh, they're, like I said, probably used slightly different paints on each one, but uh, they go together really well. They've turned out great. I'm really happy with them. I hope you guys have a crack at it and see how you go. If you've enjoyed this video, if you're still here, I know it's been a very long one, so if you are still in the video and you've enjoyed this one, please hit like. I uh, appreciate your subscription too if you're enjoying any of the builds that we've done before. If you haven't checked any of them out, uh, please go and have a look. I've got uh, quite a few build videos up at the moment and I'll have some more coming out soon. Uh, I am struggling to get more uh, videos done in the schedule that I would like. That's just due to this crazy lockdown at the moment and some homeschooling I'm having to do for my daughter so uh, I do apologize if you're hanging for these videos it is taking me a little bit longer to get them all produced and ready to go so uh, appreciate those that people that have uh, subscribed already thank you so much it really does mean a lot to me um, I hope you've enjoyed this one you take care thanks guys